And we're back, right where we left off. Now, before I uh, skip forward in time a little bit, there's a couple of things I want to change because I've been looking around at the mistakes I've been making. Uh, there's always quite a few. Uh, I changed the the pressure threshold is to above. I added on below, which means it would always be on. Uh, I'm going to have to do the same down here. Uh, I'm going to turn this off. This has actually been siphoning out all the gas down here, which has been great, but uh, it's just a waste of power right now, and I am drawing quite a lot of power. I don't really need to save it, but I'd rather save it. Uh, well, rather save it now while I while I can. Uh, the fish in here. Someone pointed out what was this to put in room overlay. If you'll notice down in there at the bottom, we have 60 critters listed. This is just such a handier way of doing this. Uh, this was from Tommy Tom, I think, in the comments. He, he pointed out that, yeah, just use room overlay. You can see how many critters in there. Instead of counting up like a peasant, you can actually just get the information handed to you. Quite nice, actually. Um, also, I am going to upgrade the priority on these. Uh, the reason being, I want these slicksters groomed because I really want to be slick switching over to these. So, so long as these are at level six, all my uh, my beasties, they'll prioritize doing the grooming down there instead of the grooming up here, which is set to five. Just a slightly smarter way of doing things. Uh, another thing I noticed is, uh, where's, wherever my dog's body is, where are they? Yeah, the dog's body here, if you notice, their skills, their tinkering is at 19. For some reason, for some reason, the, uh, the grill up here, it now considers... Uh, cooking to be a tinkering skill, which is why their tinkering improves. However, at the same time, it seems tink the tinkering skill is what's used to control how long the cooking task takes, which means they end up cooking really, really, really quickly. Uh, I think there they're cooking an omelette right now. As you can see, that's insanely fast. Normally it takes an awful lot longer. Uh, tinkering improves speed by, let's see, it's supposed 10%. Uh, cooking improves it by five, I believe. So this means since they're levering up their tinkering, this actually makes their cooking twice as fast. They're getting twice as much per point of tinkering as, and they only get half as much per point of cooking. So this means cooking is actually a lot faster right now. We'll, we'll see how long that lasts. Also, I forgot to install a battery shutoff up here, which was kind of sloppy. Uh, I like to have a battery system hooked up here, just uh, so that they can draw power from the steam turbine when it kicks in. We store that power in here. And then, oh, like that, we store the power in here, and then we disconnect from the main grid when we don't want to use it. Uh, where is, yeah, it just uh, reduces the chances of me ever having overloads or any problems along those lines. So there we go. Perfect. Now I'm just going to skip forward a bit until the oil wells are finished, and we're ready to start on our next project. Hmm. One last thing, I also somehow forgot to hook up the output of this to the uh, liquid vent. Thankfully, I already had the the pipe in place here, so I was, I'm was i actually able to do this externally. Otherwise, I would have had to crack this open and let all the steam out and then put in more water. It would have been a huge mess. But uh, yeah, that was actually kind of lucky. I was really worried there I hadn't got that pipe in. Oh, well. Um, yeah, skip forward a bit more. Now I have a few little pieces of oil over here that I want to get rid of. I really do like to clean everything up. Absolutely everything. Uh, it's just pure habit at this point. Uh, get rid of that. Stick down a little pump. There's not really that much down here, but I want to make sure I get it all out. Uh, liquid pipe. Where's our plumbing over here? Uh, now we want... Actually, we will put in a bridge here to start. Uh, because of the way that bridge is set, we it will give priority to the pipe coming off this direction, which means we should be able to pipe the oil out of here just first. I want this area gone, and then I can dig it all up and use the actual fossil that I can find down there. Now, I will also need power for that system, actually. Uh, give me a cable. And maybe dig that out as well. Once that's all gone, I'm going to dismantle this whole area and take out all the fossil. Actually, I'll take a little bit of this fossil now. Some of that's not touching the uh, abyssalite. Right, okay. next project. 
I've managed to make a complete vacuum in here as well, so I can actually start up this second one. Uh, for this, uh, we're going to use Atmos sensor. Oop. And ventilation-wise, we are going to use insulated gas pipes all the way out. And that can go to there. And that should be the end of that. So once I set the pressure sensor on that, oh, I also forgot to put in some temperature shift plates. Uh, let's see, you can go there, 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 there. Yeah, this is why I try and not spam temperature shift plates everywhere. I find them very useful and I have a tendency to use them way, way, way too much. But that should make sure that the temperature in there remains stable. Now, uh, ventilation wise, the gas is going to go up here and, oh yes, there's one other thing I forgot up here. I saw this in my travels. I haven't actually hooked up this automation wire. Very sloppy of me. Okay, and that'll mean once the gas pressure or the this gas tank is full, all the overflow will get burnt off automatically. Now, once all those projects are done, ooh, what's this one? You know what? We will cancel that. I don't want you to be continuous anymore. I am going to wait until. Oh, damn it. I'm going to turn these off continuous. This is probably the last set of molten eggs I'm going to do in here. I'm going to start replacing them all with larva eggs as the time comes. And I think I have just about enough slicksters that I should be able to get enough larva eggs to start filling this up. And then I'll start cracking the molten larva eggs. And uh, next up, we are going to go start taming natural gas geysers. Oh, actually another thing I want to get rid of. It's been something that's been bugging me. I want to actually get rid of this chunk there and there. That should give a nice drop-off point for duplicates if they want to actually exit the pipes. All right, they don't actually need these uh, transit tube access. These can be used... The transit tube access can be used for landings or takeoffs. These kind of exits can only be used for, well, exiting. They can't actually load up there. Now, next up is the natural gas, which is way over here. This is what I want to tap into. Uh, though I'm not even sure I want to... <laughs> The natural gas output is 88 grams a second. That is just really, really, really bad. Just insanely bad. Uh, we're going to need to get all the way in here. Now, there's a little bit of polluted oxygen in there, but I should be able to deal with that. So what I want to do is basically make a liquid lock to get in here, not let in any more gases and seal it off. Otherwise, I'm going to have to vacuum it out and go through a whole bunch of stuff I'd rather not go through. So we'll put in a liquid lock there, and we'll seal that off there. I'm also going to want to uh, get rid of the slime out of here. What's the pressure in there? Five kilos, yeah. So I'm going to want to get the slime out of this area so it's not actually interfering with anything. And I'm probably going to want to start using insulated tiles. This comes out at 150 degrees. Pretty toasty. Now, plumbing. Another liquid lock for me to forget about. Right, so I'll come back once the liquid lock is good and we're ready to crack in here. One of those little things I missed, I didn't actually get the ladder up here high enough, so that high-pressure gas vent has been unable to be completed. It's an unreachable build. So I'll just put in this extra ladder segment, and then I can go about deleting that carbon dioxide, or what's that up there? Chlorine. I can go about deleting that chlorine up there. Also, I think there's a little bit of hydrogen, sour gas left up there. I might just wall that in and uh, well, then just diagonally kill it, just because it's a pain to deal with. Not really necessary it's only a tiny bit of gas i just like to dispose of things that like that i'm also going to get rid of this down here uh, actually do that properly i'm probably going to want to give that an escape so i'll put in some mesh tiles there that way it should be able to flow across here and get up the top there where i can uh, dispose of it later why is that one tile higher than it needs to be okay that was just stupidity on my part i cannot believe i missed that <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Yeah, they've actually been hopping up an extra tile for no reason. I think it was this uh, this slime up here that uh, confused me. Okay, I'll sort that out as well. And uh, I'll be back to you in a bit when they catch up with all the commands we've, I've given out. I've given out quite a few commands in the last while. And uh, they still haven't caught up with everything yet. Another minor thing that I really need to correct is for this uh, volcano here. I have a petroleum bottle emptier over here to dump any petroleum that gets mopped up around the map and dumped in here, which means my duplicates are running through here to jump off the petroleum. Now, one minor thing that could happen that I have forgot about is that if they're standing, say, right here when they get called to lunch, they'll drop whatever they're carrying, including the petroleum, which means that petroleum would drop down here and instantly flash to sour gas. 
they could be carrying anything else, but it's more than likely that they would be carrying petroleum going through here. So I want to actually finish this mesh, mesh tile off and seal in this area. It's highly, highly unlikely that such a thing would happen. But give it enough time, say a few thousand cycles. Yeah, that's something that could uh, come back to bite me. Ah, here we go. This has actually done its thing. Now, as you can see here, the natural gas is actually down to 231. That's not too bad. Uh, actually, we're going to trigger this right now. We're going to drop that to, what percent is it? 33%. The back pressure is at 33. This is what this controls. So if I left it to 75, it would keep working that up. Every 25% is worth about a cycle. So now I want to slow this down so we can have a quick look at this when it happens. Okay, so once the duplicate starts venting the steam by pulling that little lever there, or that little string, this stops working. So the 10 kilos of water that are in there are staying in there. And if you'll see, the temperature on them is going up 55, 56. That's because it's stuck in there right now. Because this oil well is not active, that 10 kilos of water is just staying in there. Now we're venting natural gas. It's quite hot, 200 degrees. Now I've let the pressure in here build up to over three. I've got some temperature shift plates down and all this stuff absorbing it, but it's still going to go up in temperature. If you had, say, only two kilos of gas pressure in here, you didn't have these temperature shift plates sucking up the oil temperature, this would get quite, quite hot in here, uh, well above 100 degrees. And when that happens, it would heat up the oil so much it will turn to steam. Now I am very paranoid about this because it caused me a lot of problems in a, a previous playthrough. So there may be ways to get around this without being so... Uh, as uh, obsessive as I am about it, but it's definitely something you should watch out for. If you're finding little droplets of water appearing in places they shouldn't be, just check out your oil wells. There's probably something going on with them. Uh, and since that's all done, let's check out how this is doing. Okay, we've hooked that gas up there. I believe this sucker is ready to go. Oh, we want to change this to... If the pressure is above 20 kilos, then we'll just turn this on. Okay, that will get us 6.666 kilos of petroleum per second. So at that point, I'm going to actually want to start limiting... Oh, why that's why it's so slow. I'm going to want to limit the amount of petroleum coming in here. So petroleum-wise, we're going to want to put in a liquid valve here. Oh, and there's some petroleum coming through from that far side. You know what, I can... Mm, it's not the end of the world. I can live with that. And we'll delete one of these little pipe segments, and then we'll reconstruct it. So this should this I will use to limit the flow. I'll probably limit to something like 3.333 kilos to start. It'll put me a little under. What am I doing? I don't want insulated pipe there. It really makes no difference. This stuff should be coming in at about room temperature anyway. Well, oil biome room temperature. And we'll change you to... Oh, there we go. So that should keep me with about 10 kilos of crude oil pouring in here. A little bit less to start until this... Uh, until that actually starts overflowing. But that should basically limit me to 10 kilos. This will slow down the removal of crude oil from the rest of the map. Uh, actually, let's go to screenshot mode here. Alt S for screenshot mode. And if we look all the way over here, over, over, over here, we're draining this first. So once that's all done, we'll strip mine that out. Then we'll drain this, strip mine that out. And once those two are done, that's when I'll actually turn down my petroleum boiler and cut down on the amount of uh, petroleum I'm running through it. Until then, we're going to tap into the natural gas geysers scattered about the map and use them to help supplement our power supply. Uh, can get rid of all of this while we're at it. Uh, can they get in at that? Nope, duplicates will not be able to reach that, so I'm just going to stick a little tile in there. That will force that oil out. Up. Uh, that's not going to cause a problem sitting there. It's just a personal pet peeve of mine to get rid of literally every single drop I can. Uh, how much crude oil we got left down here? 500 kilos. Okay, then that means I can mop all this up. Uh, let's go back up to the natural gas geysers now. Okay, so I think we've got enough in there. Let's disable auto bottle for those. And let's deconstruct them. Actually, how much crude oil have we got in there? Yeah, that's plenty. And what we'll do is I am going to wall this in here so that we've got a complete vacuum. And then when I dig in here, I won't be bringing anything extra with me. Actually, we'll put you up there. We'll wall you in here. All we really need for this is just a, a sealed room of decent size. Uh, for this one, not too much of a decent size, to be honest. It's so weak, this natural gas geyser. I'm not even sure it's worth tapping into. Uh, it's kind of worth it. 
I'm going to have to run a natural gas pipe up to here anyway to go all the way up to the top one, which seems like it's more worth it. So I might as well tap this one along the way. Okay, so once this is sealed in, I can actually dig in here and I won't be dragging any gases with me. Now, as you can see in here, this is vacuum, namely because it was all solids before I started digging. This is just one of those handy ways to get into the, to create a vacuum. In this instance, I have natural gas already in here. All I have to do is kill those two tiles of polluted oxygen up there. And I've just made my life a little bit easier. I don't have to do a whole bunch of uh, scrubbing out of the room or vacuuming or anything like that. Just cuts down a little bit on the inconvenience. And go up there. And what I want to do is dig this out up here. Trap in those polluted oxygen tiles and then seal them in there. Actually, yeah, let's put it to scaffold like that. Nope, nope. Damn it, I've just let a bunch of gas in there that I shouldn't have. Uh, let's make you all sixes. That was extremely sloppy of me. Yeah, a bunch of oxygen just got in there. And I let some natural gas out. Two. Okay, what we've managed to do here is we've trapped all of that oxygen up there, thankfully. Now, all we have to do is deconstruct that. And we'll queue up some bricks at level 6 here. Actually, put the rest of them in level 5. And deconstruct that, deconstruct that. Now we can build diagonally. And what we'll do is replace all these with solid tiles. And that will actually compress all the gas. And eventually, once we overwrite the last one, destroy it. Uh, I'm also going to want to take out all the slime that's in here. Uh, that can go, that can go. Ooh, all of you can go. So you know what? Yeah, that was my bad. I actually deconstructed that slime. And now it's... Uh, yeah, it's venting in there, so I'm going to have to overwrite that. Yeah, you can see there's actually polluted oxygen in there. If I build at an angle, the tile will overwrite everything, destroy the gas. So I hopefully don't have to deal with it. And then I'm going to sweep up the rest of this. The pressure in here is above 2 kilos still. So because it's above 2 kilos, none of, this, uh, none of the slime in here is venting. So it's still remaining all pure natural gas, which is the way I want to keep it. Well, at least for now. No oh, accident. It overwrote that. Okay, that is every single piece of slime out of there. Oh, wait, is that... Ah! I've somehow managed to put it up, it's up there. Okay, you know what? We will just do the same trick again. I'm going to wall that in and build diagonally. Hey, I'll just skip forward in time and when that until that's done. Now, I've got most of this box completed. I just want a big enough box so that when this vents, it never overpressurizes. Considering how weak this natural gas geyser is, that should never actually become a concern. But this is just a... A standard issue design I would use. Just something about this size. And then I would stick in two gas pumps right about here. Uh, deconstruct you. And then for this, we are going to use insulated gas pipes. Just Ignis Rock is fine. Just going to pause this so I can run this faster. Now we are going to run this all the way down the map. Oop. Back up. And then here it gets a little bit more complicated, but uh, actually I'm not going to make that even more confusing. I'm going to go this direction. Hmm. Now the gas coming, the natural gas coming from down below, that's coming from the oil wells, and I want that burnt off first because if that backs up, I can't, oh, I can't remove the pressure from the oil wells, which means the oil wells will stop working. That would be bad. So I'm going to put in a little gas bridge here. This will mean the the gas coming from this direction will get priority and will be burnt first, and the gas coming from up top, from the natural gas geysers or whatever, will be burnt second. Uh, however, it is going to be a while before the natural gas down here actually accumulates to a point where it's going to be useful. This has to get up to 20 kilos, it's only at 6.7. And thankfully, even though it starts at 300 kilos, this uh, oil well producing the oil, a few temperature shift plates, and yeah, the gas in here has not gone above the, the melting point or the boiling point of water. This is getting vented for the first time as well, so it's also going to be a while. And as you can see, the natural gas is not escaping, despite having these two gaps here, because the oil is pouring right out. 
this is exactly what we're looking for. Okay, now the only thing left to do is hook up power to those, uh, to those uh, fan pumps up there. Just let me have a quick look at my power grid. Now, this wire right here, this one right in the middle, sandwiched in the middle of these two, that's 960 watts. That's actually the power wire that's feeding uh, transport, uh, one of these little transport grids down in the oil biome. So it's got 900 watts to spare, which is good for us. Uh, now I'm just going to run this all the way from the bottom of the map again, because I don't mind running really long cables. Uh, something that was pointed out to me there was uh, these conductive wire bridges right here. Now for some reason, I was always of the assumption that if I ran a cable through these, it would uh, it would merge the cables. Uh, turns out that's not a thing. <laughs> yeah, uh, this was pointed out by Cohen Visser in the comments. Uh, turns out you can just run a power cable straight through these. They're, they're technically blocks, so they don't actually matter. That's just something I've been doing for so long I didn't even realize. Uh, I didn't even think about it. So yeah, you can run a power cable straight through those. It's not an issue. Now let's just run this cable up. I went past it. Uh, actually, let's take advantage of being able to run this through those. Exit. And that'll provide power for these. And the gas pipe here, the insulated gas pipe should be fine. I've also insulated the whole box as well. I want to make sure that none of the heat in here escapes. And I'm also going to seal this up with a couple of blocks afterwards once it's finished. And I don't need the duplicates to get in or out of there anymore. It's just this is going to be pumping out natural gas at 150 C. After a while, it will heat up everything in here to 150 C. And I want to make sure the whole thing is insulated so that heat cannot escape. And I'm probably going to want to put a ladder down the back here. Uh, yeah, right about there should be fine. I might even double insulate it down this side as well, just to be 100% safe. Uh, from the bottom. Actually, let's double insulate on the bottom as well. And I'll put in an insulated tile there, and ooh, I can now put in an insulated tile there. I put in this backing here so that when I replace this tile, the oil didn't, didn't escape. If I tried to replace this tile here with another tile, the crude oil in here would just, a little bit of it would escape out and plop on the ground. Uh, and while I'm at that, there's some polluted water down here that I've been meaning to dispose of. In fact, quite a few things I've been meaning to dispose of. These power transformers have been sitting here doing nothing since I upgraded the power grid. They can go. Uh, this down here, I want to get rid of this polluted water that's in there. And actually, let's check the germ overlay. Yeah, there's no germs left alive anymore down here. So I'm going to stick in a couple of mesh tiles. What that'll do is all that polluted water in there will escape. I'll replace those tiles. And we'll also put in some more insulated tiles right here. And that let all the polluted water out of there, and then I can dismantle some of this junk. It's a, a little bit messy. I might actually move that carbon skimmer down just a little bit as well. Just to tidy everything up. Uh, how are we looking on fish? We're up to 67 critters. Oof. Nice. Okay. Uh, let's get back up to the natural gas and just finish this sucker off. I'll fast forward in time a bit until it's all ready to go. Okay, in the vein of everything catching up with me way too quickly, I've got uh, larva eggs here. One more larva egg has popped, so we're going to incubate that as well. Actually, what's this looking like? Two of seven, yeah, we'll start incubating there. Another larva egg. Um, unfortunately, I'm also starting to accumulate molten larva eggs, so some of these uh, hatcheries are going to get overpopulated and stop producing eggs as quickly. So I'm going to start just cracking those. It's going to slow down my transition, but uh, I really just want to get onto regular larva eggs as quickly as possible. Now, you may be wondering why I'm going switching out the molten larvae for just regular larvae. Considering I'm going to be turning everything into petroleum, what's, what's the point? Well, hmm. I... Hmm, how can I explain this? The temperature down here is going to end up about 90 degrees, maybe 95. The reason for that is, is basically these oil wells. They're turning out 3.3 kilos of crude oil per second constantly. And that's just going to help chill everything they touch down to about 90 degrees or so. So since this whole area is going to end up at 90 degrees, I'd need to then put in a heat source to keep it above 100 to make sure these slicksters keep getting better and better and better. And that one's glum. Why are you not getting groomed? Hmm. I may want to do this mantle another hatchery. So if I wanted to keep these all at molten slicksters, I'd need to be running them in a 100 degree environment. Now the simplest way to do that would be to actually have, a, say, carbon dioxide around this petroleum area. 
but then I'd need to install five ranches near this. It just takes an awful lot of space on top of the awful lot of space that the petroleum tank is going to take. It's just not worth the effort. Well, it would be worth the effort if I didn't have a petroleum boiler. The petroleum boiler means any extra crude oil I accumulate from these slicksters, I can just throw it through the petroleum boiler. It's no real extra effort. And since the magma is effectively free anyway, who, who really cares? You know what I mean? Uh, so that's why I pretty much use them constantly. Anyway, back to, where was it? The yeah, natural gas. Uh, I'll cut back in again when this is just about ready to go, unless I find something else that needs attention. And here we have a completely finished natural gas geyser tapped. Now, I'm tapping these rather late. Uh, some people like to tap these almost immediately the moment they get their hands on a bit of steel. It's just I find... Uh, I usually prefer to get my oil up and running first. Oil just is so much more powerful. Natural gas... Uh, like, this is a terrible natural gas geyser. 88 grams a second. This can't even run one natural gas generator constantly. We're looking at about... Assuming this runs, say, even this ran 100% of the time, I'd be getting about 800 watts per second out of it. It's just so little, it's just not worth my time. The one further up that we're going to tap into next, that one's got an awful lot more natural gas coming out of it, and that one's a lot more worthwhile. But even with that said, I would definitely, definitely prefer to get an oil boiler up and running. It just gives me so much power, I don't have to worry about anything else. Now, all that natural gas is going to be pumped down all the way down here. Uh, I have a tendency on my maps to just, well, I, I don't adapt to the map, I make the map adapt to me. It's just a playstyle preference. Uh, this was brought up when someone was asking me about why I don't use the slush geyser for more. Uh, the slush geyser up on the top right, let's scre scroll out a bit. Uh, this slush geyser up here, uh, where is it? Over there. That is an enormous amount of cooling tied up in that. I could use that for an awful, awful lot. Uh, but the reason I don't... Um, I always play on a random map. It's always a random map, and as such, I, I've never really had a slush geyser to play around with. So I had to learn how to solve all my problems without the slush geyser to help. Now that I have a slush geyser, I haven't really ha adapted any of my play strategies to it. Namely because any time I encounter a problem that needs any cooling, I simply throw power at it. Steam turbine heat deletion, I just simply pump in the, well, wire in the power, so to speak, and that's it, problem solved. What I could do is run uh, slush water through here and use that to cool it. But how much slush wa water do I use? Uh, how many kilos per second should I put through there? What happens when it goes dormant? What happens when it goes active? I have to think of all these things and then meter out the amount of polluted water I'm going through there. I'll also have to account for how often the slush geyser is active or inactive. I, I, I find it really hard to come up with a definitive lockdown. Yes, this is exactly how much I use. It would also depend on how much steam the vent is giving off. With this, current solution doesn't matter what this is doesn't matter what its output is none of that matters all that matters is i go okay there's one of these there bang i throw one of these on it i feed in the power problem solved i never have to look at it again that's why i use these it's just pure simplicity uh, it's just uh, the strategy i've chosen if you've got to actually work out how much polluted water or slush geyser water you've got to throw through an area it starts to complicate things these i plug them down they cool themselves, and also they cool their own battery banks, and, as well as that, they simultaneously cut themselves off from the power grid when they don't need to be charged. Actually, we're going to make you 60. Yeah. So once the battery level here hits 20%, it plugs into the grid and draws power, and since the batteries charge really, really rapidly, because they will just absorb all the power thrown at them, they quickly fill up, and then they disconnect from the power grid again, which really helps me prevent overloads. I've never had any overloads on my 20 kilowatt grid. Just a general playstyle preference on my, my part. Now this uh, oil that was over here, all gone. So what I'm going to want to do is remove all these little crude oil bottles that are lying around the place. I don't want any of them touching hot abyssalite and flashing to sour gas. It wouldn't be the worst thing in the world, it'd only be a tiny amount, but I really do have to clean up all this mess. I'm also going to want to clean up this mess over here, uh, and this mess over here. So. These things are all things you don't need to see. I'm just going to queue up some commands to get rid of this. I'm also going to strip out all the power wires that are over here, the cabling, the the piping, the well, this, this pump as well. I want that steel back. And then I'm going to just put in some ladder scaffolding and demolish the whole area. Is there anything nasty in here? No. So I'll just do that all off camera and I'll be back to you in a wee bit. I have also managed to accumulate a long-haired larva egg. That's actually good because I want to crack them. 
uh, that could potentially cause problems with my uh, ranching if a few of those eggs end up in the wrong place. They give a great de decor bonus, but they consume oxygen and well, they might be nice pets. I, I don't want them. So yeah, I'm just going to crack them all and turn them into food despite their extreme rarity. So I just uh, cracked open a little pool of water here. Now, since I've got a water tank left under here, that just means all this water is going to flow down here and drop down to our water tank down at the bottom. So if we scroll all the way down here, you'll notice this water is just dropping all the way down and then straight down into our liquid tank. A little liquid catchment tank like this, not a bad idea to prevent messes. Also a nice way to make sure that you collect all that water that's floating around on the map. I'm going to have a little bit of a problem though if it comes in on the ladder side. It'll actually hit here, maybe splash. Hope some of it might go up there, but it should eventually all end up down here anyway. But this way I should be able to drill straight up through the map, cut left and right, and just pour all the water that's in here, over here. I'll basically just take all those water pockets and pour them into the center. And then I can split them off and send them to cleaner polluted water, whichever is which. Most likely polluted. Um, and that fish should eventually manage to hop his way down to where we need him. Eventually. Right now, I'm just trying to, well, clean everything up. I have lots of random polluted water that's appeared around the place, so I'm just going to mop all of that up. That's all going to have to be dumped into my polluted water tank down here. Uh, I've also got the random crude oil and petroleum that's accumulated in the, the far end places down in the oil biome. Just uh, down over here on the right. So I'm going to want to pick up all of those as well and dump them off in the appropriate areas. I've kind of got food, power, and oxygen sorted right now, so I'm in no rush. So I'm probably just going to let this run for about 20 or 30 cycles, clean everything up, uh, get everything sorted, and actually get all of these. Why is that not? I'm not really going to remove you from there. And we're going to make you continuous, and we're going to incubate there. That one had stopped incubating because this seems to have hit the seven critters. I, I basically want to get all of these incubated uh, queued up to incubate lots and lots of larvae eggs. I just want to replace everything with uh, regular slicksters. Once that's all done, uh, then we'll we'll go about tackling space. Well, next up after I've done this is going to be tapping into that second natural gas reservoir. Uh, where is this? Uh, up here, I've been building up the the power grid, and I've also been moving up my uh, transit tube access. So I'm uh, adjacent to this. It should make uh, dealing with this and managing it very quick. Uh, so I'll be back to you in about 10, 20 cycles once all the, the minor cleanups around the place are done. Okay, after some of the more grindy bits of the game, I hollowed out the top areas and the bottom areas, and now I'm just filling them in with bricks. Do you need to fill them in with bricks? No, this is uh, more of a personal preference on my part. I like to do this because it does improve frame rates just marginally. Having uh, bricks instead of gas does improve frame rates, and I really only do it in the oil biome just... Uh, I started doing it at one point, and now I don't know why, but I keep doing it. I, you don't need to do this. If you've hollowed out the oil biome sufficiently, it, it really makes no difference. Just leave it the way it is. I have uh, got all the oil, and I've dumped it in here. I've got all the oil from over here as well. So basically, the only oil left on the entire map is in these two pools here. Uh, this is slowly trickling in 3.333 kilos. These two are popping out another 6.66. So I'm keeping this pool just about level. I haven't put in the automation to completely stabilize it yet. This pool I also haven't automated yet, but I'm just going to finish off uh, walling these in just out of personal preference, and then uh, we'll get back to some actual vent taming. So after, I think it's been about 30 cycles, maybe more, just uh, doing some cleaning up, I've demolished, I've just demolished there the last of the stone hatches. Stone hatch ranches. I'm not actually killing these off. Uh, they're actually a little bit dangerous to your duplicates. You can kill them, but it will injure your duplicates a bit killing them. Uh, I've also taken out the incubators. The whole thing, I've just stripped it out, even the uh, automation, just to get rid of them. Because down here, I've almost, well, I haven't quite topped up all of these uh, ranches, but we've got seven, seven, four, two, and five. So we're pretty close, and I've killed off all the molten slicksters. The ones that produce petroleum, I just want crude oil. It just makes things simpler. Uh, as well as that, I've bricked in most of the uh, the upper and lower parts here. I'm just going to do big long strips eventually, but uh, for the time being, I'm kind of I'm kind of all done with that for now. A little bit tired of it. Uh, I also bricked in over here. Not completely necessary, but something I wanted to get around to at some point. Now, now that that's all done. Oh, the fish. Let's see how the fish are going on. Fish are up to 105 critters. 
that's not quite completely out of control, but we're getting there. I'd love to get up to about two or 300 and see what happens. Uh, the breeding pool, I'm just keeping three in that. There's two alive at the moment and one more waiting to hop in. I'm pretty happy with this, actually. This is quite a stupidly OP design, in my opinion. This ability to just breed enormous amounts of Paku. My uh, steel is up to 63 tons. I'm well ready to tackle space. I could have tackled that, actually, before I tidied up the oil biome, but I, I want to get every all my ducks in a row before I get around to that. So I think next up we're going to tackle Natural Gas Geyser. That will be the last thing I do today. And then tomorrow I'll probably move my entire oxygen creation setup. I want to use a new one. But first off, I'll just cut in here, put in a liquid lock, get in here. I'm going to have to put in uh, drywall and a few things, and then I'm going to use all of this. I'm going to use this, dump it down into my uh, power brick, and that should also reduce our petroleum consumption, and then put in some automation to make sure our petroleum never overflows. Yeah, so I'll be back to you in a bit once we've got uh, the, the liquid lock in place. So I've lined everything up here. We've got uh, the two gas pumps in. We've got the actual pipe that's going to carry the natural gas down to our generators. That was a very long run of insulated igneous rock pipe. Uh, and I've just tacked it on here to the output of this other natural gas geyser. And I've got most of the other bits and pieces already lined up to be done. And so the duplicates should just come in and, well, hammer it out. Actually, the only thing I'm missing is an Atmo sensor, which we'll put about there. Automation wire. And we'll just set that to one kilo so we can drain all that out. Uh, another thing I'm going to have to do is put in backing plates here to stop uh, some of this escaping into space. So drywall pieces. Um, actually, we've got mafic rock nearby. We'll just use that. And I'll probably have to put a few pieces over here and here. I'm going to sideways build that so I don't accidentally dump a bunch of water in. Uh, downside, a little bit of oxygen got in because I didn't repl replace that tile. I, I built the tiles at a bad angle and uh, the oxygen got in down the bottom. Fortunately, the vacuum up here has pretty much reduced it to micrograms now, so this should not be a problem one way or the other. But uh, I'll just skip forward a bit. This is the exact same design as the last one. A couple of steel pumps, Atmo sensor, and a sealed room and you're done. Sealed insulated room and you're done. Okay, so we're all done here. Um, natural gas geyser is kicked in. Well, is plugged in, but it's not actually active yet and won't be for another 27 cycles. Work set at about roughly a constant two natural gas generators running constantly. Uh, the other natural gas geyser definitely makes up for that by being useless. But they're both plugged in now. All I got to do is wall this sucker in and we are good to go. I've even swept everything out. Uh, we'll just wall those in there. And that's the end of that. That's plugged into the system. And I think that's the everything below space done. Uh, I want to do one last thing though before I go to space. I want to migrate my oxygen uh, setup. My oxygen setup is currently still running on that old... Uh, it's running on the old wires and it's kind of terrible. Well, not terrible, but it's done its job. But I want to upgrade to something a little bit more robust and stronger. And I'm going to rip this whole thing out of here. So first, I'm going to figure out a place to put it. I've been thinking somewhere over here where there's lots of space. Then once that's up and running, I'll uh, I'll tackle space after that. And how's our fish looking already? 107. Yeah, that's that's definitely getting good. Oh, yeah, well, I know this one's a bit of a short one, but I was actually doing an awful lot of work there in the background uh, just to make everything nice and clean. But uh, we'll leave it here and uh, hope you enjoyed it and have a good one.